We're coming from our bistro kitchen today. This is something that we do normally during the school holidays, but unfortunately we're all stuck in a little bit of lockdown. Uh, so today we're gonna make a pizza. It's gonna be a nice, simple, easy one. Something you can make with mum and dad um, and make them feel a little bit happier. So first of all, we'll go through the basics. So the recipes, what you're gonna need, the equipment, just some safety things. It's important that we're all safe in the kitchen. Um, and then once I've shown you the recipe and how to make it, then, we'll sh then I'll show you on how to roll out the pizza dough, how to cook it, and then you'll get to see the finished product. So I hope we're going well. Uh, make sure you have a pen and a piece of paper with you because you're gonna need it for the recipes. And then we'll go from there. All right, so what we've got here, so we've got a KitchenAid, so not everyone is gonna have a KitchenAid with them or a mixer, but that's fine, you can make it by hand as well. That's the fun stuff, you get to get your hands dirty. So we've got a KitchenAid, we've got our hook mixer with it, we've got our bowl, we've got all of our recipes and ingredients weighed out. And then for us, we're lucky enough, we get to have a pizza oven. So we have our industrial pizza oven here. But you, once again, if you turn your oven up at home, make sure you have a nice pizza tray in there, or even just a flat tray, you can make it on a flat tray. All right, that's the joy of cooking. So, with us, we've got, for the ingredients, we've got flour, we've got some dried yeast in here, we've got some salt, we've just got some water, warm water, and then we've just got some olive oil as well. All right? So as I tip each ingredient in, I'll go through the weight of everything. All right? So this is baker's flour, all right? So it's a little bit better than plain flour, it's slightly stronger, better to, for use for making things like pizza dough and bread dough, all right? So this is 156 grams, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that into our mixer, all right? Then we've got our yeast. That's two and a half grams of yeast, all right? So we'll put that in. We've got our salt, that's three grams of salt, all right? So we've put all of our dry goods in, all right? Always make sure when you're cooking, you just put everything to one side that you don't need. Very important, all right? So for this, make sure you've got mum and dad to give you a helping hand. So we'll lower it, and then we'll just turn it on to a very low setting, all right? So that way we're just gonna start the mixing process, all right, we're gonna to start to get everything mixed in, all right? Now, we have our water with us, all right? So, we're gonna to need to pour this in slowly, all right? So we've poured that in, all right? Once again, we'll just put this to one side. Now, this is gonna be a bit of a slow process. You'll see it's a little bit wet in the middle and you'll see all the flour is around the outside. That will gradually work its way in. What you can do, you can just give the side a bit of a tap, get mum and dad to give it a bit of a tap, and that will shake a little bit more of the flour in, all right? So what you want to do is you want to incorporate all that flour into your wet mixture. All right, you can turn it up just a little bit more, but no more than that, all right? All right, you can start to see everything is incorporating, all right? So we've got to that stage. A lot of the flour has been incorporated in already. So we've got our olive oil, which is 15 grams. Oh, I forgot to tell you how much water is in there. So it's 95 grams of water. So we've put 95 grams of water in there. Then we're gonna put 15 grams of olive oil in here. Make sure we're keeping our fingers away from the side of the mixer. Once again, getting, making sure we're getting mum and dad to help us. All right, now you can start to see everything's coming together there. And you'll know when the dough is ready, when everything starts to come together and it pulls everything away from the side and your bowl will be end up being basically nice and clean. We're almost there.
As I said, it can be a little bit of a process, but that's half the fun. All right, you can see everything's now coming together. It's gonna to start to form a ball very, very soon. There we go. That's what we're looking for. As you can see, everything has come together now. So now we'll turn it off, all right, and we'll take the dough out. Make sure we turn everything off at the power point, we unplug it when we're putting our hands down around the mixer, all right? So that's a nice shape, all right? So that's exactly what we're looking for, right? It's nice and smooth, all right? Got a nice sheen to it. You can roll it into a nice ball, all right? So that's what we're looking for. Now, as I said, if you don't have anything like this, you can make it by hand. Follow the same process. So you put your, all your dry ingredients into a bowl first, all right? And then using your hands, you can add your liquid slowly. So first of all, your water, add it slowly. Make sure you're mixing it in. And then you can add your olive oil and you can tip everything out on the bench and then just knead it into a nice ball, like so, all right? And you'll end up with the same process. You'll end up with the same product, all right? So, as I said, that's what we're looking for. Now, we've got some semolina here. We can just sprinkle a little bit of that in the bottom of the bowl. We'll put our made dough into the bowl. And then we're just gonna sit that there, all right? So what the semolina does is it prevents it from sticking, all right? Now what you can also do, is you can get a little bit of olive oil, and you can just rub it over the top, all right? That prevents the dough from forming a crust, all right? Just like that. So now that we're at that stage, we'll cover it up with some cling film, some glad wrap. Always the hardest thing to do is find the end of the glad wrap. Someone sabotaged me here with this glad wrap, as you can see. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover that. And then we're just gonna put that in a nice warm area, all right, to let that dough through. All right, so we'll leave it in a nice warm area. You can leave it on, say, on top of an oven, just in a nice warm area. You can fill your sink with some hot water and just leave your bowl set over the top of the water. That's fine, all right. So what I've done is I've prepared a dough already because you've got to let that dough rest for about an hour, I'd say. All right, so here's one we prepared a little earlier. Right. So as you can see, it's got a nice sheen on it. Right. It's also nice and soft and it's warm, all right? Nice and gooey, that's exactly what you need, all right? Just a nice little ball. Perfect. Right. You want your dough, when you take it out, you want your dough to be a little bit warm. You don't want to be too hot. That means you've killed the yeast. That means it won't really rise that well. But if your dough's just nice and warm, it should rise to perfection. And kids, this is half the fun. You get to play with the dough. All right? So I'll put that bowl to one side. Right, so the next thing we're going to be doing, all right, 
is we're going to be rolling the dough out. So some people like to use a roller, like a rolling pin. Some people just like to use their hands. Um, unfortunately, I'm not good enough to use my hands. My hands are a little bit too big, so I end up poking holes in my pizza dough, which is not what you want, right? So we'll use a, a rolling pin today. So once again, we've got our semolina. We'll just give our bench a light dusting of semolina, all right? And what I'm doing here is I'm just starting to stretch the dough out a little bit. All right, I'm creating a bit of a circle. Now at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what shape your pizza turns out. It could be square, it can be triangle, it could be round, it can be whatever shape you like. Ideally, we'd like it round, but if it's not, that's okay. All right? So that's the base of what we've got here. So mum and dad, you can help with this part as well. All right? So a little bit more semolina. So once again, the semolina will prevent it from sticking and it won't clump as much as what flour will. So when you've got to the dough, the, the dough to this stage, you don't want to be adding too much extra flour, right? That means your dough is gonna to start to dry out. All right, so that's what we've got, nice and round, all right? So getting our rolling pin. We're just gonna roll it out, all right? To whatever size you like. So roll one way first, turn it around a little bit, then roll it again. And once again, turn it 90 degrees, roll it out again. You want to try and keep all the sides nice and even. If you need to add a little bit more semolina, do that. You will maybe need to get a dustpan and broom out after this just to wipe off any semolina that's on the floor. You will end up finding a lot. Right. So we're almost there. As I said, once again, as you can see, mine's not gonna be particularly round, but that's okay, it doesn't have to be. Another 90 degrees, we're almost there. All right, so that's the size we've got. We've got something, a generous size, that's gonna feed one person, maybe two very small people, all right? So I've got my ingredients with me here today. Now the best part about pizza is you can put on it whatever you would like. If you're one of those people that likes pineapple on pizza, go ahead and enjoy that. All right? If you like the old classics, you can have a Mexicano, you can have an Aussie. You can even go a little bit far-fetched and you're right. If you ever had a tin spaghetti pizza, you will never go back, all right? Try it. You can put a lot of cheese, you can put a little cheese, all right? So this one will be a little bit gourmet for us. So I'll just go through all the ingredients. So we've got some prosciutto here. We've got some buffalo mozzarella. We've got some cherry tomatoes. We've got our pizza sauce, very important. We've just got some marinated artichokes, just some salt, some rocket and some olive oil. So, just before we make our pizza, because as you can see, we don't have a pizza tray, we're not gonna make it on the actual pizza tray. Just make sure you've got enough coating of semolina on the bottom so your pizza dough is not gonna stick, all right? It's the last thing you need. So first things first, all right? We've got a sauce, our pizza base sauce, all right? So you can make one of your own, you can buy a tin, this is Predominantly just tin tomatoes, all right? And then you can add to that whatever you like. You can add some herbs to it. You can add some spice to it. All right. So you don't want to go all the way to the edge, all right? You want to just create 
maybe a couple of centimeters gap between the edge of the pizza. Just like that. All right. So we'll put that down. Now, next, we've got our prosciutto, all right? You may need mum and dad to go shopping for this for you, but we're just gonna break it up, all right? Now, once again, you can be as generous as you'd like. You can be as scarce as you'd like. You'd wanna lay it out in a uniform pattern. Okay, so we've put our prosciutto on there. Now when you're building your pizza, especially if you want to make it a little bit gourmet, you want to create layers, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to put our, our artichokes next, right? So I've cut, these are just ones that we've found in a jar. You've cut them in half and I'm just going to break them up a little bit at a time, all right? Just like so. So the whole idea of this is you use your hands, you get stuck into it. It's all about texture and taste and feel and all those things that it comes to it when you're cooking. All right. I like my tinned artichokes, so I'm gonna be a little bit generous. I know what's wrong. All right, so we've got that. So next, what we're gonna do is we've got our buffalo mozzarella, okay? So one bowl is probably going to be enough. With this, now you can either slice it, or once again, you can just tear it up. They do create, contain a little bit of moisture, so I'm just going to use, break it up over a bowl. Like that, all right, lovely. So once again, we're just going to add it, scatter it around. Just try and fill in a few holes, make some big pieces break up some small pieces. Now, mum and dad, I know this is a bit gourmet for a pizza. You may break the budget a little bit, but it's gonna be, you're gonna enjoy it, all right? All right, so I've used about two thirds of a buffalo mozzarella ball. Now, I'm not gonna be traditional. I'm not gonna use any normal mozzarella on this, all right? So it's, it's going to be, as I said, a little bit gourmet. Last but not least, we've got some of these lovely cherry tomatoes. Now these are heirloom cherry tomatoes. All right. So keep on scattering them. Around we go. Look at that, that's a nice full pizza. Make sure everything's covered. All right. So there we go, there's our pizza. Now, obviously next comes the important part. Next we have to cook it. So what we're gonna do is very gingerly, we're gonna put our pizza slice underneath here and once again kids you're gonna probably gonna need mum and dad to help you with this and this is what happens if you don't put enough semolina under here it gets a little bit stuck there we go so yeah it moves that's what you want okay so our oven is set quite high so our oven pizza oven goes to 357 degrees, all right? So obviously not everyone's gonna have one of these at home. You may be lucky enough to have a wood fire pizza oven out in the backyard, all right? But ours is stone-based, ours is a little bit more traditional, okay? So what we're gonna do, we'll open our door. That tiny doesn't wanna stay on there. And then we're gonna pop our pizza in here. Lovely. Slides off perfect. And then we're going to close it all like that and set the timer 
and away we go. And in three minutes and 15 seconds, hopefully we'll get a nice pizza coming out. Obviously you wanna keep an eye on it. So don't always trust the timer. Have a look, keep your eye on it, see if it's burning, see if it's not cooking. If it's not cooking, put it in for a little bit more. Now, while that's happening, make sure you clean down because obviously we've got a bit of semolina. All right, a bit of semolina floating around. Make sure we keep everything nice and neat and clean and tidy. Last thing mum and dad needs is to be cleaning up more stuff, all right? So we've got just a spare bowl here. And with this semolina, we're just gonna sweep it into a because we don't want raw semolina on our lovely cooked pizza, okay? So it's coming along nicely. While we're waiting, we'll get everything else that we need. So obviously we're gonna need a pizza cutter, that's gonna be important. We've got our plate. And then obviously, there's a couple of things that we haven't utilized, yeah? and they'll go on after the fact, all right? So we've got our salt here, we've got our rocket. Not everyone likes rockets here, you can use a bit of spinach, you can use a bit of basil instead, and then we've got some olive oil. So we're really gonna jazz this pizza up for mum and dad. So the pizza's coming along nice. So you also, if you don't have a pizza oven, you also may have something like a pizza stone. Maybe you can convince mum and dad to buy a pizza stone. You can put in your oven, and once again, it will act very similar to the stones at the bottom of this oven. All right, we're almost there. The anticipation is killing me, all right? We're almost there. This is sometimes the hardest part, waiting for your food to cook. There we go, all right. So we'll open up the, open up the oven. So we'll have a bit of a quick look, see what it's like, we'll pull it out. That's looking pretty good. All right. Once again, just make sure you get mum and dad to give you a helping hand. You're dealing with very hot equipment. All right. So we'll slide that off. That's looking very good. All right. So it's on your plate. You want to hear a bit of a crunch. That means your pasta dough is cooked. You know, I think if you just cut this into quarters, I think that's good enough. All right, so we've done that. Now, with our salt, obviously your prosciutto is gonna be quite salty to begin with, so you can either season it with a little bit or just leave it off. Depends on how much salt you like on your food. All right. We've got our rocket. Scatter that around. Right. And last but not least, we've got our good quality olive oil and we'll give that a bit of a swirl, okay? All right, guys. So there's our pizza. As I said, with a pizza, you can put on it whatever you like. That's the most important part about cooking. 